When certain powers meet, a momentum of urban change may follow and great relics are being created. We realize huge projects in the built environment in which all socio-political, cultural and economic interests converge. These projects need to be both efficient and realistic. However, they simply cannot prevail without being embedded into utopian contemplation. Because, when certain powers meet, they change the environment so fundamentally that the boundaries for growth and development are set for decades to come. And thus, the architectural ambition in these momenta should be set the highest possible. Today, I want to dramatize the priority of architectural ambition for the contemporary stadium typology. Before talking about the contemporary situation, let us remember one of the main historical references for the event space, only to recollect the intentions that led to the act of building it. Let us remember the famous story of the Colosseum. Rumor had it that the Emperor Nero had initiated the Great Fire of Rome to make space for his private plans. Afterwards, the Emperor Vespasian acted on this rumor and decided to give some of the land Nero wickedly obtained back to the public by building the Colosseum, a place from and for the public, Res Publica. Now let us inquire the contemporary event space that is a stadium, its single purpose character, the periodical emptiness and the schism between the endorser and the community. In five score years, stadiums all over the world developed into single purpose venues. Only few shoulders can carry the investment of such mega projects. Evidently, the main focus and the main interest that is taken care of is the one of whose shoulders carry it through. What once was Respublica became private property. What kind of invention would trigger all concerned parties to think different about a new event space and could challenge them to look for a better symbiosis of res privata and res publica? What I propose today is to cut open the stadium typology and to change its infrastructure with architecture. This way, the stadium is primarily a city district that can be temporarily privatized for an event. I started to investigate this simple design act after visiting the Italian Piazza del Campo in Siena, which twice a year can transform into the Palio event. I realized that we should no longer try to build temporary lightweight infrastructure, but instead we have to replace the entire infrastructure with a cluster of city blocks. Consider for example the plan of the recently built iconic structure for the Olympic Games in Beijing. The stadium approximately measures 240 by 320 meters, which in size equals a cluster of 10 city blocks, 80 by 80 meters, arrayed in a rectangle around an urban court. Thus, instead of developing one mega building lot, we would develop 10 separate lots simultaneously. Each building would be separated from the next by an 8 meter street. These streets would virtually coincide with the axes of a stadium. The only required architectural invention would be that these buildings need to have one facade towards the central square that is both a grandstand for spectators in case of an event and a qualitative shell that completes and contributes to the inside of the building. Typically, for these building blocks, multiple escape routes are required. If we upgrade the status of a secondary escape route to an architectural promenade along an inclined facade and we manage to control the axis where it meets the ground, we create a wonderful outside routing that can become a grandstand during an event. Furthermore, it allows us to develop very characteristic spaces that benefit from it. Imagine hotel rooms organized along the inclined facade. A motel-like situation would emerge 
where guests can watch an event from their hot tub and prefer to use the outside route to stroll down to the hotel restaurant. Or imagine that we are talking about offices and private condominiums along the inclined facade. During an event, the private terraces of meeting rooms or condos would turn into VIP loges. How to connect to specific socio-political, economic and cultural conditions. If one compares the Soccer City Stadium in Johannesburg with, for example, the design for the Antwerp Snake Arena or even the Allianz Arena in Munich, one might conclude they all look alike. Yet this is not a problem. The problem is that the ambition for the architecture is the same everywhere, while the socio-political, economical and cultural conditions might differ tremendously. For example, high on the political agenda for Antwerp are, among other things, schools, traffic management and housing. In recent political debates, it is often suggested that they should rather invest in schools than in a controversial stadium, that they first need to solve traffic and parking for the inner city before thinking about a new stadium, that they should invest in housing projects rather than to save up for a stadium. But why should we as a community choose between either a stadium or, for example, schools or park garages or housing? Can we as a community not raise the stakes and have it both ways? It should not be either or, but both and. Once we cut open the stadium typology, it is easy to distribute several pieces to different concerned parties. A cluster of schools, community service buildings, shops and private practices can be created around the square. If each block of the cluster sits on a subterranean car park, the cluster will turn into a major transfer point to public transport, rightly positioned at the edge of the historic city. If on top of the first layers, local users both invest and start to inhabit offices and condominiums, the central square flanking facades will form the grandstand of an alternative stadium. And finally, the blocks can be finished with the lightweight crowns that unify the cluster of city blocks and give to the whole the collective endeavor atmosphere and character that we associate with big event spaces. These crowns are grand greenhouses for the residents and thus provide plants, vegetables, insulation and renewable energy. During the event they might also serve as spacious convention halls and as shiny billboards to promote the sponsors. This event space could be realized at once for any upcoming international event. But a second scenario might also be thought of, in which the stadium is not built at once but grows over time. Imagine how a local sports team, the pride of the community, grows over time to gradually become a professional team and at these rare occasions finds its date with history and shines in tournaments worldwide. Now imagine how the community the sports team belongs to can develop its built environment over time. As it prioritizes, it must first build schools, houses, offices and shops. After which it can invest in extra infrastructure and gradually enlarge its hybrid buildings, densify and diversify the cluster until ultimately the cluster becomes a landmark that is a perfect setting to organize great event gatherings. I told my students to dream about such possible city districts that meet both the requirements of a temporary event space and the requirements of a city center with regular urban life. To conclude, when certain powers meet, we allow ourselves to construct mind-blowing exaltations of our prosperity. We allow ourselves to build museums, convention halls, theatres, opera houses, stadiums and many other iconic structures. They remind us of the possible greatness of human abilities. They allow us to identify with certain cultural expressions. They link us with both the past and the future. We now come to realize that in the afterlife of the event that initiated their construction, Stadiums more often turn out to be a burden. The house can never be filled afterwards with the number of spectators it was designed for in the first place. 
Stadiums are out of scale and as oversized structures, they disrupt the city fabric. Their bigness rules out any reconversion, yet their infrastructure degenerates within a decade. Over time, a dissociative schism settled in. Stadiums no longer represented a cultural identity or community, but became a symbol of alienated powers. As a result, when certain powers are about to meet today, Politicians accept this schism and deeply ponder about the either-or choice at stake. They have to choose between the economical interests on short term and the after-effects for the community on long term. The thoughts for stadium architecture we want to share today should be read as a necessary catalyst to solve the socio-political paradox that involves the common good versus the corporate good. It provides all concerned parties, designers, planners, users, politicians, a third way of reading the problem and in that sense helps to overcome the oppositions.